It's June 2022 and it is the first month of the new NRL 22 season, the 2022-2023 season. Runs from June till May of next year. With that, I wanted to record this video just to do an overview of the gear that I'm running going into the new season. I recorded a video shortly, a, sh a short time ago covering the gear that I ended last season with. Now, not much has changed and the rules haven't really changed that dictates anything special any significant changes to how you should kit up for these matches. But I just wanted to talk about like what I'm running. So first things first, we'll talk about the gun. Uh, same gun I've always been running, it's the Voodoo Gunworks V22 Gen 1.2. I call it Gen 1.2 because it's the generation one, but I got the mod the upgraded bolt, which uses the non Remington 700 bolt shroud. It's just a simple part you replace out your firing pin assembly. But that's what we call a Gen 1.2 unofficially. It has a Bartling 20 inch MTU contour barrel, 116 twist, all Cerakoted and FDE from the factory, threaded the muzzle, but I don't run a muzzle attachment. With the trigger, I have a Trigger Tech Diamond Pro Curved single stage trigger. It's set to about 14, 12, maybe 12 ounces roughly, maybe three quarters of a pound, maybe under that 10, 10 ounces, I haven't reweighed it. But it all sits in this matrix, the MPA or Masterpiece Arms Matrix Pro chassis. This is new for this, this season, new to me. I just got it this past week or last week, this past week. But um, got this new chassis in. It's replacing my MPA BA comp, which I'm not going to get rid of, but that's w what was on here before. I wanted to try the Matrix when it came out, but never got around to getting one then they announced the matrix pro late last year or earlier this year before shot show once i saw that i said you know what let's try the matrix pro so i don't want to get into all the details on the matrix pro i'm gonna i'm still testing out and i'm gonna have another review on this chassis uh in a sh short time after maybe a couple months of using it but and it sits in this matrix pro chassis so this is the new thing for me and then um, on top of it sits my Zero Compromise Optic ZC527 with the Impact 3X reticle. It sits in a Spur ISMS mount. This is the SP6002, which is a zero minute uh, mount, 36 millimeter diameter, 1.5 inches tall, or you know, scope height. And it sits on a 60 minute rail from Voodoo, so I don't, that's why I don't have any cant in the scope mount. It's all on the rail. So 60 minutes, I can zero to 25 yards if I wanted to, even maybe even shorter. But I have it zeroed at 50, and I can still, I think I have like 31.7 mils available on this gun with a 20, 50 minute, uh, 50 yard zero. I have about 31.7 mils available in elevation. And then a lot of people ask me about the, the wrap here, this little cover on the scope. This is a scope chaps scope cover, um, scopechaps.com. Really cool, kind of pricey, a little bit pricey for, for most people's taste, but it's a nice way to kind of customize your gun and protect your scope. If you have got an expensive scope and you, you're gonna be using it around barricades, if you don't wanna scratch it up when you're impacting like a ladder or you know a porthole or something, this will protect it. And it's got these you know, hook and loop attachments so you can, um, sorry, hook attachments so you can just put patches on here, your standard Velcro patches. MK machining scope caps for the Zero Compromise. Um, they're really good caps, like them. They secure pretty well. So that's what I've been using on my Zero Compromise Optic uh, scopes. Uh, Skypod, I'm running a Skypod standard single pull. Um, I really like this bipod, very versatile um, for all situations. Highly recommend it if you're a competition shooter. And uh, it's a little pricey, but I, I, it can't be beat for, for what it can do. Let's flip the gun around. It is unloaded. I'm gonna flip the gun around. And on the left side of the gun, you can see my Coltac cheat sheet, which is just a dope card holder. It's very simple, Vel nylon with hook on one side, your, or sorry, loop on one side, hook on the uh, vinyl cards. You can have a bunch of these vinyl cards. Just use a China marker or dry erase marker and it fits on there. But it's very simple, I like it. If you impact it, it won't break off or snap or anything. And if you have to go into a small porthole or barricade, you know, you can get through it without your, your dope card holder causing you issues. And one other item is this scope level. I have the Send It MV3 electronic scope level, which I do have a review on. So check that out for more information on this. But it's mounted to my spur mount with the Picatinny rail attachment and it's in a vertical position. So if I can take the scope off and it's gonna be level, like this is level to my reticle. So I can put this on another gun and I know this scope, this, the send it level is going to be level because my it's, it's level to my reticle, my reticle is level to gravity. 
think that's it for the gun itself. Uh, yeah, I'm not missing anything here. So the uh, cut to this side here. Now, as far as magazines or no, sorry, as far as what I'm running in the gun, I'm still running Lapua Center X ammo. That's what I run in this gun. Shoots great. Midas Plus shoots slightly better, but the cost savings, I don't really think it's it's uh, the, the cost upgrade, I guess, or the premium for Midas Plus over Center X. Not worth it. Uh, so I just stick with Center X. And I uh, did go to the Lapua Rimfire Performance Center, so I do have my gun. Uh, I didn't have my gun lot tested, and so I do have a lot, a case of ammo that shoots very well in this gun. So I haven't even cracked it open yet. I'm still using some La old Lapua that I bought uh, blindly from other vendors. But this is what I'm running in my gun. Magazines, I'm running about seven polymer mags, and I, I, have to, I like having a lot of mags so I can just load them all and have them ready for my NRL 22 matches. You know, you don't have to reload unless you have malfunctions or whatever, but generally seven mags, just load all seven, you're good, and not counting zeroing or whatever. I will mention before I get into my bags, my carry system. So I run this Blue Alpha uh, duty belt. It's a, uh, this is the outer belt and it's got hook on this side. I have an EDC belt, which has got loop on the outside. And basically you just wear your EDC belt like you normally wear any other belt. And this just goes over the top. You just wrap it around and secure it with a Cobra buckle. I love this belt. I'm going to get another one because this is Molly. And so I have my pouches attached to it and I don't, it's hard to get the, the pouches on and off. So I would like to have a second belt like this just for my like, you know, carbine pistol range shooting where I have my taco mags for my AR mags and in my my Glock mag pouches here. But anyway, I carry my gear, my mags, two mags here, um, keep two mags and I'll keep a mag in my back pocket. But generally one will be on the gun when I get on stage and I have two spare mags just in case that malfunctions, I can reach for one uh, and I can quickly reload and clear malfunction and reload. And on that's on the, uh, I would say 10 o'clock position. On the roughly 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock position, I have my Kestrel 5700 Elite, you know, for my ballistics. Keep that on me all the time. And then I still have my Sig Kilo 2000 in here. So on this, at the 3 o'clock position, is FHF gear pouch. Also for the Kestrel's FHF gear pouch. Um, so FHF gear for these two pouches. But I have my Sig Kilo 2000. If you follow my vlogs, um, my, my videos on YouTube, you know that I have a Sig Kilo 8K. That's actually in for... Uh, inspection and possible repair because I had some issues with it lazing targets or lazing anything um, it's inconsistent compared to my 2000 so I'm having that looked at but I should have my 8k and that's what I'll be running but right now I have my 2000 here but I should have a C kilo 8k ABS um, and I've I should be running that to this new season but unfortunately I'll have it for this video because it's still at SIG now let's talk bags because that's kind of the primary thing you need. Well, not the primary thing, but one of the things you'll need when you shoot an NRL match, NRL 22 match, aside from your bipod for support. So I've been trying to keep my, ba my bags to a minimum, and my primary bag is this Armageddon Gear Medium with a heavy fill. Um, this is going to be my all-purpose bag, rear bag, and then barricade bag. That's the, my go-to. Sorry if I'm waving my hand around. This flies and bugs out at the range. It is summer, so they're coming out in full force. Um, secondary bag. This is kind of my um, alternate bag for when the situation calls for it. This is a Coltac D bag on a interface with an Area 419 rail changer. And what I can do with this, the reason why I have this bag is if I can sh mount it for you. It basically secures the arc rail. Um, generally, I would move it a little bit more to the side but because uh, it's on a tripod. But anyway, um, this gets me a nice thin height so if i wanted to shoot on a ladder stage or a porthole stage if there were one where you have very limited uh vertical space such that a bag like this would be too big this is perfect so on the ladder stages i like this bag because i have very it keeps a thinner profile with this bag easy to use so i keep this as my secondary bag it's kind of my alternate for when certain situations arise now i carry a third bag it's kind of my this is a supplementary bag that I don't really use if I don't need to. I've been trying not to use it. This is a Coltac Mega Bag. A lot of people have seen this in my videos prior. I, I used to use it when I first got it very heavily, but I've been trying to avoid using it. And what this is is basically a, uh, it's a very large body pillow. It fills up dead space. So if I'm on a kneeling position against the barricade, sitting position, or some other awkward position where I need to fill dead space to get more support for my arm, this would be it, right? I can, I can sit down, 
I can like lean into something, have this as my pressure point, and then I'm trying to tip my rifle over. And I can have this to fill the dead space, get more support for my arm, feel more stable. So I've been trying to avoid using this simply because I think this is a crutch, right? You should be able to, most stages to be able to shoot without something like that. And I want to practice, I've been trying to force myself not to use that kind of pillow or that kind of bag for support. Just shoot with my one bag or whatever, learn how to keep my body in a such a way that I can get locked in and understand my wobble, control my wobble, and then shoot well without something like this. But I keep this around just in case. Maybe one day I just feel like, oh, I'm not feeling well. Um, maybe I'm jittery or something, I drink too much coffee. I'll go, I'll keep this around in the end of my vehicle and I'll pull it out if I need it. But I've been trying to avoid using that. So that is kind of like my supplementary bag. So I have my three bags, my, my primary, my alternate slash secondary, and then my, my, you know, kind of emergency supplementary bag. And then as far as uh, spotting equipment, I'm going to grab that off camera because I forgot to bring it out. I had to quickly retrieve my spotting equipment. This is new. Uh, I used to run the Vortex Viper HD 10 to 42s as my kind of range spotting optic. I don't use a spotting scope anymore because it's just for short range NRL 22 and in general, it's just easier to use binoculars now when you're spotting on steel and not spotting for yourself. And so uh, I've upgraded my binocular to the Swarovski NL Pure 12 by 42s. Um, one of the, one of my friends and the other match director has one of these and I saw his and I had to get these. So. Running these now, excellent clarity. Love these, I have a review, written review and a video overview of these binoculars. So check that out if, if you're interested in some really really high grade glass. But this is my spotting optic for NRL 22. And as far as tripods are concerned, I just use whatever. I have my, sorry, I, it's off camera because I'm using it for my uh, secondary camera for this, for this recording. It's just a Enduro, Enduro? Yeah, Enduro Stealth Git 204. It's a generic made in China scope or tripod. Um, they've been discontinued for some quite some time, but I got it from one of the camera online camera vendors because it was on clearance or whatever. Uh, it's an okay tripod. I wouldn't recommend it, but I have my BH55 really right stuff on that, and then I have this really right stuff. Um, and I can't even remember the names of these things anymore. I believe this is the TVC 22i. This is the inverted tripod legs. I've already talked about this many times in my other videos. Check my check my videos out on that, uh, covering this tripod. And then I have the leveling base, the really rest of the leveling base. So I can use either of those, these two tripods for spotting. But I keep three tripods in my, my cheapo Manfrotto, which is what I'm using for my primary camera, simply because when I record videos at the range, I just have that tripod there. But I have a wealth of tripods, which are kind of irrelevant for, irrelevant for NRL 22 because we don't use tripods in NRL 22, uh, except for, uh, well, we don't use them for the match because you can't, there's still, tripods are still prohibited from NRL 22. If they do add it, then I'll probably go with the, the inverted, the TVC 22i for my, my tripod. Anyway, my tripods are only here for recording. That's pretty much what they're here for. And glorified like stands for my gun. Um, and then one other item is my kit fix it sticks. I always carry these around. I, it's a custom custom. Uh, I just got the pouch and I put together my kit myself cause I bought, you know, uh, Weeha bits and then, um, all the various fix it sticks, uh, torque limiters. So I do keep these with me all times because if there's any kind of repair I need to do, I can do it on my gun at the range with this kit. So. That's kind of it for my gear for NRL 22. I don't think I forgot anything, but if you have any other questions or comments regarding my, the stuff that I covered here, like, and you want some more uh, detail on why I chose what I chose, feel free to comment in the video and I'll try to answer those questions and concerns as best I can. But hopefully you can all get out to the, an NRL 22 match in your area uh, to start out the new season. It's still early June, so hopefully there's some matches going on and you can go attend those. And if not, um, you can't make it out to June matches, definitely make it out to the future matches. I mean, it goes from June till April, and then May is the championship next year. Thanks for watching, and uh, check out the rest of my vlogs if you can.